Good morning guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm just bringing you up to speed of where I am with my gate for the French garden. I decided to unpick it. I think I mentioned that in the last video and I'm so pleased I did because it was like, I felt like it was going to overpower the whole scene and I wanted the gate and the fence sort of just to back away a little bit. Not the gate, the fence and the arbor just to back away a little bit so the cream stitching was perfect and um, really really happy I made that decision. I finished my little gate. The only thing I haven't done is the sign. If you remember there's this hanging sign here um, to be stitched in. I decided I wanted to make it three-dimensional so like a layered piece so I want to work on that in this video and also the leaves. If you recall I stitched two little leaves down here I'll bring them up to the camera and show you and you'll see my problem I've got they're too pale that little pretty green is just not holding its own on the background of that um, um, linen there and I, I think it's because that gray linen has that green undertone so it's just absorbing this pale color so I need to rethink my leaves and I think what I'm going to do is make a three-dimensional leaf so like I did with the flowers cut them out and place them all down and then stitch them down these flowers and what I've done so far oh my goodness it took three movies that's how long and probably longer because I think when I finished filming I hopped up had breakfast went and did a little bit of paperwork and then just put it near my chair and whenever I sort of came back into the room I'd do 20 minutes move on 20 minutes and then in the evening we sat down to watch a few movies and I just didn't stop and I think it was a oh, quarter to midnight when I finally finished what you see here having said that I did start playing with the stepping stones I stitched them down and using that chocolate thread I filled in the little X's and I'm yet to decide what I'll do with the little daisies. I'm thinking whatever colour I choose, they will drift out of that zone and around that whole area to sort of create a floral treatment. You'll notice too that I did go down onto the calico. My calico is the backing and it's hanging out past the linen. So I just started heading out into this area. The, um, and I'm really liking it. It's like the, the linen has become a floating piece and then you've got your backing piece of your calico. I, I sort of, I'm happy with the way that my design is going to drift outside the boundaries. That little piece was left over from when we were cutting these, so it's down. And I just did some running stitch over it just to fasten it down. That was that random little flower that I cut out and decided that this arbor didn't need it. So I've just stitched him down. He was floating around all over my couch and I was like, you are going to get lost. So I've stitched him down and I'm thinking I'll do a little flower thing here somehow, I don't know, using him. Um, there'll be more flowers going here, but that'll sort of come along as they come along. Um, what else did I want to tell you? Oh, my piece is really fraying, my calico. So I've gone and done a little running stitch along this bottom and I did the top. It just took forever because of the sheer distance. And of course, I've still got this side to do, the long side. On the opposite side is a selvage. And I was getting ready to snip and rip. And I thought, no, hang on a minute. Let's just go with it. I'm going to leave the selvage as a feature and maybe find a lace or something that'll sit within that edge so it will have this selvage edge. I really want to see the organicness of this piece is sort of what I'm thinking instead of it being trimmed nicely and yeah trying to just let things be a little bit if that makes sense. So something will happen there. This side here um, there's going to be some wildflowers. I'm going to go back to the, our, our favourite book, Foolproof Flowers. Embroidered Flowers is what it's called. And I might even do that in this video. Sorry, I'm just jumping up and grabbing the little book. I might even do a bit of a, a thumb through and work out a plan of attack for over here and sketch that in. But 
first things first, I need to finish this and I really want to use a 3D effect. So I found this fabric here. It has a little spot in it, which I thought was a bit cute to have little spots on my leaves just for a little bit of interest. So I'm just going to freeform cut. Where's my scissors? I did have a little piece cut off here as well. I'm just going to cut out some little leaves and place them in. So I'll do a few so you can sort of see what I'm thinking and I guess make sure I'm happy with the way it's going to look. Now in the design, in the pattern, the designer had the leaves sitting on a little stem. I think I will still do that because it just softens it a little and gives a little bit of air in there. So where, whenever I place a leaf down, I've got to just allow that space for me to put in a, a couple stitches. So I'm just going to have a play, start down the bottom with some leaves. So real exciting stuff for you. Because all I'm going to do is cut a heap of these random little leaves, roughly similar shape. And then just poke them in around the place. So pretty simple. I think they're going to be heaps better. It's more bloomin' work, mind you, but what else am I going to do? My other pieces are up to speed. I've finished filming the second part of the others. The only one that didn't get a second part was the one that's the splash of colour because it sort of came together in one video. But I've finished the other ones, so they're ready for next weekend. Meanwhile, in the gap in the middle, I'm just going to keep playing with this because there is hours and hours of work here. Being that it's such a big piece. Okay. Yeah, oh, oh, much better. Much, much, much better. It's funny how colour works, isn't it? It just either works or it doesn't. If you can't see it, well, what's the point? I could just see stitching all of those leaves for hours and hours and then finding that I just wouldn't notice them. Sort of feel like that needs to might be a little bit big. I might just trim him down a little. Yeah, that's better. And this one could have a smidgen off. Now, if I don't put a little bit of glue on these, I think they'll just disintegrate in time so I'm going to also take my time and come back through with my art glitter glue or a fabric pen glue I think I'll use the art glitter glue because it gives me that fine little nozzle at the end of it to control the glue I think it'll be worth the, the effort there we go. Yeah, much, much happier. The colours are better too for my piece. So we've got that real um, olivey green. So I sort of want to stay true to that. Got so much room to play here. I've started thinking about what else the girls could come up with for prompts and gosh, there's so many things that are in gardens. So we could be doing anything, which is very exciting. It's going to be quite a challenge on the smaller pieces for some of the prompts that popped into my head. This piece has got plenty of, you know, plenty of room to move, so I'm not too worried about this, but 
some of the others I'm like oh goodness this is going to really be a, quite a challenge which is great it's fantastic it's what we want oh, something I was going to mention to you all too is a channel that I follow called Fiber Art popped up with an interview for Ann Brooks Ann Brooke the 52 um, tags, the flags, the So for the Soul. I'm a bit of a, a fan of Anne's. If anything, that's where I sort of rekindled my love for Stitch again. I, I think it was Rachel showed her um, project that she was going to do with Anne. I think the collaboration it was where they stitched a panel each. I think even Susanna was involved in that. And... Um, I um, and Jeanette, and then there were some girls from the States, I believe. Can't remember the, the other names. But anyway, it's beside the point. Uh, so I was like, well, who's this Anne? Who is this girl? And, of course, then down another rabbit hole with another textile artist you go. And they have done a, a one-hour interview with Anne on Fibre Talk. I'll link it below. It's really good. It's just, I just went and laid down on the bed, closed my eyes and listened because it's a blog. It's not an actual video. It's a, um, a blog. So there's two people interviewing them. I'm not sure what their backgrounds. I've only just found the channel. So I'm sort of still going down that little rabbit hole. But it's really interesting because they interview people from around the world in the field of textile, textiles and art. So there's such a broad topic there and it's, yeah, and they, as they talk, they'll put on the screen some visual images of the artist's work. So there was a lot of Anne's projects that most of us have participated in. So even when you're watching or listening to one that's about another artist you'll see their work pop up so there's a lot of historical type work that's featured from different cultures around the world so it's just so interesting I had a few people ask me you know who do I watch who do I follow because they're new to this whole world and it was a really tricky question because you've got your top you know five or so which we all know we're all following them um, but then I sort of said, well, start searching some random things like a stitch or a style of art. And you'll be surprised what you find because I went looking for cut work. I'm sort of starting to learn what cut work's about because um, Susanna's project has a cut work pattern as one of the blocks we're going to do in the coming months. I think it's March or April, something like that. So I thought, well, I don't know a lot about it. And I have a few doilies that have that cut work in it. It's where you embroider like a buttonhole stitch around your design. And once it's all secured with this really close together, well, it's this stitch here that I used on my arbor, just over and over and over, but really close together, as if you'd done it on a sewing machine, which they do do, a buttonhole stitch. It's the, the stitch that is the long part of a buttonhole. It usually goes over at the end and then the sewing machine will come down, then jump across and then go back up. And then you slice your button open, buttonhole open. Well, it's that stitch all the way around this um, embroidery image that you choose. And then once you've finished your stitching, you cut out sections to just create a hole. So in Susanna's project, we're exploring cut work. Now, I've never done cut work before. It hasn't even entered my brain as an option. So I've been just watching videos on cut work. And I found this, apparently, it's an Italian um, form of stitching. Stitching, It's where it came from. And this Italian man, he's, he goes through the process of doing a piece, just a small little project. Some of his videos are in English, but most of the videos are in Italian, which, of course, I can't speak. 
and I couldn't find sort of the whole series completed in English. So I just started watching the Italian version and I was quite surprised at how much I still picked up because I'm a bit of a visual learner. So I need to see it demonstrated, which pretty much is most of us, I think, in this industry. We're all visually inspired and visually watch. So I'm sitting there listening to this Italian chap speak and demonstrate how to do cut work. And it was really good. So when I got asked from a couple ladies, you know, who do I watch? Who do I follow? That was um, my suggestion is go looking for technique and you will find hundreds of videos out there and that will find you a new artist or teacher to watch. It's quite interesting. So if you hear a term of embroidery that you're like, oh, I wonder what that is, just search that. Even beading, beaded flowers, that's a rabbit hole. My goodness, some of the things you can do with beads is just incredible. And even some of the jewellery makers doing beadwork, we can apply those ideas to our pieces. So that would be my suggestion, is go looking for some techniques as well as designers. And the other suggestion was, if you don't have an Instagram account, grab one set yourself up one it's just a visual smorgasbord of images and what you'll find on instagram are a lot of the the designers that have classes so they don't do youtube they've got full businesses dedicated to um, their craft and in order to survive in our industry, they create online classes. So you pay your fee, you go in and you may be in a Zoom, you may get a pattern, you may get a pack of fabric and some instructions, whatever it may be. You will find so many designers in that arena that you just won't find on YouTube. You might find an interview with them. And then when you go uh, looking, they've got like a a classroom, a virtual classroom or workshops where you can go in and actually do a class. Now, Instagram will give you the smorgasbord of all of those types of artists like um, Tilly Rose. She's written a few books, which I've also shown on, um, on my book review. The um, When I went looking for Tilly Rose, all I could find on YouTube was just numerous interviews and just little chats that she's done over the years. But um, to really get into how Tilly does her work and her processes, you buy a class. Um, there's heaps, there's heaps. And if you start following some of your favourite folks like Rachel and Sarah, they're always out in them looking at you know, different classes and growing their skills and they'll they'll like or follow one of these artists. And if you follow Sarah and Rachel, you'll see the people that they're following. So that's the beauty of Instagram. You sort of it's nearly it's nearly like a rabbit hole full of tunnels. You sort of once you start following a few people that catch your eye as something that's your interest, you'll see others following others that are similar. If, does that make sense? I'm really rabbiting on now. I'm certainly not paid by Instagram to promote their product, but there's definitely, definitely um, a great way of finding like-minded artists that may inspire you or better still, you find a course that you'd like to do with these people. Pinterest, we use Pinterest a lot just for inspiration. And boy, if you don't have a Pinterest account, grab one and take a photo of your work and pop it up. It's a fantastic place to store your work. Even if you don't make your photo album public, because you can select public or private, just to have a record of somewhere where you've got all your pieces recorded. It's, um, they're all in our phones but it's 
it's just a lovely place to pop your work and you can follow others and they can follow you. So if you want to create an album of all of your work, get yourself a Pinterest account and um, just add, go through your phone and any photos of all any of your work, just pop it up there because it becomes like... And you'll be surprised how much you've done over the years. You will be stunned and you'll end up with quite a kaleidoscope of, of your work. So it's another lovely place to show your work. Mind you, I don't do a lot of that. I've set it up, but I just don't have time. I'm barely able to get it up on. Where did that leaf go? I'm barely able to get it up on Instagram. There it is. But if you've got the time and you want to store your work somewhere, Pinterest is a fantastic way of doing that. So, yeah, if you're looking for artists, you sort of have to look in a few spots. And that would be my my tips is follow someone that we're already connected to like Rachel and Sarah on Instagram and uh, Lisa Mattock is another one and then you'll see that as Lisa works through her career of and her business of embroidery she will come across different artists and experiences and she'll post photos which then might catch your eye and send you down another rabbit hole and you'll find another artist there's so many out there it's it's just like a smorgasbord of lollies <laughs> that makes sense gee all that yibby yabba and look i'm getting around getting around my piece i won't bore you with the gluing side of things are we going for time? 20 minutes. It's coming together. I'm so glad I unpicked that fence. Just wasn't sitting. I just, yeah. Don't be afraid to unpick things. I know Anne made a comment. Never unpick anything. Always just leave it. And no one will ever know that it's not right because it just sometimes will be right or not right, whatever. I, and I was listening to that and I had that morning unpicked all this. I'm like, oh, so that's a theory. Never unpick anything. It is what it is. But I don't know if I agree with that. Sometimes you just stuff it up. I think Anne's work is probably more um, interpretive where when you're doing a piece that is as realistic as, you know, you're trying to get something realistic happening. Sometimes you just have to unpick it, especially if you're doing maybe an eye on an animal. I mean, so you want it to look like an eye. Where I think Anne was talking more about a whimsical floral image or a, she, I know they had on the screen, I think, when she made that comment, some of her snippet rolls. Now, they are not meant to look like anything. They're just a, a collection of stitches, fabrics, um, structures. So I think that's what she sort of meant. But in my brain, straight away, I thought of, oh, well, I did unpick that. I didn't like it. So, yeah, no, it's interesting it was. It sort of felt like I was sitting across the craft table with Anne, getting a bit of an insight to how she thinks, and more of an insight into how her her business came to be. And that was. I find that just fascinating because I'm very much into business and developing businesses, and that's my day job. So to hear how she turned her love of stitch into a a business is really, really interesting. There was all sorts of learnings there. So if you're out there wanting to make your love of stitch potentially 
a job for you so that you could give up your day job, I'd highly recommend you have a listen to Anne's chat or interview because it might just give you a few ideas that you could implement in your business plan. Okay, coming down the straight now. So I didn't use much fabric. There's only a small little rectangle. Okay, come on, release. Oh, bandit. Bandit, bandit. That's, that's my male Australian Shepherd. He's getting lippy. I think the guy next door has pulled out the whippersnipper. So Bandit's now getting to that age of, excuse me, what are you doing? Where he's, he's 10 months old. So prior to that, he was oblivious. He's just this puppy running around causing trouble in his immediate area. But now he's becoming more aware of what the neighbours are doing. Now, what I want to do is work out this little sign. So what I'm thinking is I picked up this piece of calico and I put a little snip here and I thought this is where this video came to be. I put a little snip here I'm thinking oh hold the horses turn on the camera we could do our leaves and then we could nut out this little sign. Sorry guys bandits having a, a wolf. And it's like a last minute addition that she suddenly got honey for sale. Now, I need a piece of fabric, I think, to lay internally. I want to use that selvage as the top of the sign. I need to jump up. I didn't think this through real quick. I came in the room and ironed the piece so that all the red went from the... Um, what do you call it? The gate. I'm just looking through my box of fabric here for this piece. That there might do the trick. Shame I don't have a sword. Bandit. Yeah, he's barking at the whippersnipper man. Oh, sorry, guys. Bandit. Okay. He's lost interest now. I found a piece that's a bit nibbled into, so I think this will be a bit better instead of wasting. And I should put so what am I trying to achieve here? Let's square this up. Bigger scissors. big don't want it too big I'm trying to be careful that I don't flick those leaves everywhere otherwise 28 minutes of work is be lost as I flick so I'm trying to get a bit of a layered Piece happening like she's made a rough sign and she's raced down to the gate this is part of the gate she had a specially made gate for her farm and she's looking at going into selling these fresh she's this is a business lady this one she's selling her flowers from her garden but in the process of having a good garden you need honeybees for pollinating and what that's opened up is an opportunity to sell honey Can you listen to me just waffle on here Talk and rubbish. Absolute rubbish. So that's the plan. I'm going to... Where's my cotton? Might actually first just get a few little invisible stitches in there. That's the rule. Invisible stitch first. The 
this helps stabilize your piece. And we're gonna make a three-dimensional hanging sign. What could we use as the, the cordage? Maybe some twine. That would work. Just a couple little stitches just to hold that. Then we might do a border in the chocolate. So it sort of looks like it's part of the image, but it's a slightly darker chocolate. And it's a finer, th I can split it down to two threads where this is crochet cotton that you can't divide, where this is stranded cotton DMC. So I'm thinking I'll use that to do a little border around. The other thing I need to do before I get too far ahead of myself is write the word, the words honey for sale. Having said that, my sign's a lot smaller than the design, so I will probably have to maybe get rid of the word honey. Let's we'll see how we go. Okay, so we've just got a few little stitches there just to hold our piece into position. Okay, so pen. Now we've got to get the word honey at least and for sale. Gee, I don't have a lot of room, do I? Come on, Kimber. Yep. Honey. Concentrating so I don't make a spelling error. Maybe I could do the word the, the digit for instead. I don't have a lot of room. Yeah. I could probably make the sign bigger, but I think that's that's enough. Let's just get some thread here. Maybe two. Don't use that needle, it's huge. You don't need it that big. It's a bit of a monster. Okay. Let's get the start of our edge around. I do. It's like you get on this tangent of creativity and then you forget to put a knot in your cotton. That's me, to a T. It's like I'm going to town, I'm going to get this and I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that and I jump in the car and I don't even have shoes on. That's how my brain works. I'm already in town making my purchases and ensuring that I haven't forgotten anything because I want to make the trip efficient and productive. And I get in the car and I haven't even put shoes on. That's me. I remember once getting to school and realizing my pajama pants were still on me underneath my uniform. So I put my little pinafore uniform on and realized I still had my PJ pants they are like little shorts underneath. I just feel like if I stitch there and there, I'll close that sign in. So I'm just going to run a 
second line of stitch down here first before I commit. I might need to adjust my words a little bit. I could get a bigger piece of fabric, but maybe I need to. Yeah, I think I need to. It's going to be too squashed. Okay, start again. We're going to redo that because that's invisible stitched. I can easily just snip it off and pull that stitch out. I think what I need to do is make the mustard element just that little bit bigger. Let's have another go at that. And we'll just have the calico peeking out. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's have a look. Is it too big for the calico? Yeah, a little bit still. I might just... Look, it's all experimenting, isn't it? We're literally creating something from nothing. So there's going to be a little bit of trial and error with our pieces. And we shouldn't get too hung up on perspective, as in... Does your path look like it's actually heading somewhere? We're not trained people in architecture. So don't beat yourself up if your piece doesn't quite look like the perspective is right. I'm not going to invisible stitch at this time because I'm impatient and I've lost my needle. I've now put my needle thingy in my... Well, let's be honest, Ferrero Rocher chocolates are the best. Their containers, depending on how many you buy, are fantastic to pack little projects in. You've probably seen, like, all the beads for this project are in a slightly bigger Ferrero Rocher box. And I've put my little pin cushion in there because, as you know, my pin cushion was created way, way back. And... I didn't realise that you could actually put um, crushed walnut shells in the pin cushion. Not only does it sharpen your pins and needles as you use them, um, it also stops your pins and needles from poking out the back of your pin cushion. And then you can even put a piece of cardboard in there just to protect. So my pin cushion, she is nasty. You pick her up and she has needles poking out in all directions. And yeah, there's been many an incident, incident where I've picked it up in a hurry and it's bitten me in. So now she's contained in the Ferrero Rocher container. And it's great because I can even drop in my cotton. So I'm thinking that's pure genius. As pins and needles fall out and go down the couch, well, they're not now because they're falling into that container. So there's a bonus. I could do with some more containers, so I must invest in some more Ferrero Rocher chocolates. If I can justify them now. Okay, I'm just coming along. This is better because I'm getting the full edge benefit. Probably don't even need to write for sale. I could probably just write the word honey. Let's see how we go for space. And then I think I'll get some wine it's gathering up on me and I'll stitch a little bit of twine on where's my twine have I got any lying in my tray there's always bits left I 
that's a big stitch. Okay. All right, let's end that off. And what I might do is see if I can see a snippet of twine. What's going on there? What have I done? Have I done a knot has formed at the end of my tail? Ah, oh, seriously, come on. What's the odds? Oh, goodness, guys, I've got a knot that has attached the tail of the needle. <sighs> now I've got to work out which thread to snip and which is the main line and which is the tail. We're going to just take a punt. Yeah, I've got it. Now my scissors have fallen on the ground. I'm just fingers and thumbs today. Probably should leave the craft room okay there's our little board now i want to do some twine next just so you know what the hang i'm talking about and it'd have to be a little bit there's some cream i was thinking more of a brown hessiany color to be honest, there's some big twine. There's some hessian that maybe I could pull a thread out of. It has to be some twine. Don't start again, bandit. You can tell he's extremely obedient. Okay. Let's just have a look at these options. So there's our sign. And this is going to attach. And then it'll dangle there. I sort of don't mind that. That size. I don't think this is going to be too... So I've just pulled a, a thread. That's not bad. That was my initial thought don't know what that is or do I use this guy I like the hessian but it needs to be a fraction thicker hang on one moment guys <clears throat> Got, um, I've got this spindle here with some twine on it and I'm wondering if I can, yeah, now we're talking, that's what we want, just something a little bit bigger, so I'll snip a piece off, that's what I was looking for in my box of tricks, there's always these scrappy bits left over. might fray too much yeah look at that it's disintegrating so I need to come up with a way of making that not do that so I'm thinking some PVC glue just to keep all those fibers together or even let's try a bit of art glitter glue just down those fibers 
massage it in. Oh, that's good. Just to hold the integrity of that a little better. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's given a little bit of structure too. Okay, so the plan now is to stitch it on. Do we stitch it behind the sign or in front of the sign? Behind or in front? Behind looks neat. In front looks interesting. It's going in front. Just makes it look more rustic. So I'm just going to do, I'm working on top of those leaves still. Like that's just crazy. So far I haven't made a mess of them. Gee, where did that hour go? For goodness sakes. Let's have another go at this. I'm just going to keep my stitches close together. Like so. Scoot across to that other side, but I'll do a little invisible stitch on the way just to get me there. And then secure this side. Oh, what fun! So, if you need a sign for your garden, if you're deciding whether you're going to sell your produce, I know I saw some that were considering putting in veggie patches so you're going to have excess vegetables and you're going to have to sell them to the neighbours so you may need a sign you may have done a door I'm just going to scoot back over to the other side and put a couple extra stitches if you've done a door you might want to shut the door or shut the gate or beware of dog in the garden if you come to visit pull out a weed <laughs> okay happy with that I'll just knot that little guy off and we have one sign so now I can trim that little morsel off there. Get rid of all my little frayed bits. And you know what I've done? I've put that on the wrong side. That was going to be on the top. I've done it upside down. Doesn't matter. No one will know. If I don't say a word, no one will know. Or maybe that's what Anne's theory was. It really looks like a shopping bag. There we go. A nice sign on the fence. That could be a fraction smaller too. Might do a little twist at the top to absorb some of the, the length. It could have been a bit smaller. If I put a little stitch there, 
that's absorbed a little bit of that length. And now it'll sit better. Yeah, that's great. So we now just write honey. And I can get the whole word in there. Sale. So she's scratched it out on a piece of timber. There we go. And that will just be stitched on the gate as a little add-on sign. Love it. So that's that figured out. Um, okay, well, look, I might leave it at that because there's a lot of work getting all those little flowers stitched down. And like I said, I think I'll stitch them with a stem and then it'll come onto the flower just to hold those little leaves down. And I'll be placing some glue around the outer edges of each leaf and attaching them all first, then adding some decorative stitches. So that is the plan. All right, guys. I'll see you in the next video and we'll talk more about the flowers and building out, you know, what I do with the path. But I think then my gate will be pretty much finished once I do these leaves. I did think I might add a few beads in too, actually. Where the vine comes out, find a bead and just do like three little beads in a row. There's the beads. Put the pin and the glue in. Just something to give it a pop of glistening. Could just use pearls. Maybe I'll go looking for a little pink seed bead. What's the time? We've got time. I'm going to go looking for a bead now. Okay. So I could do... That little bead would work really well. Let me zoom in so you can get a real feel for the colour. That little bead would work a treat. Little clusters of three beads. What other ones have I got here? They're a little bit bigger. Maybe I'll work them into the flowers. Get a bit of burgundy. They don't look quite right. Sort of getting into the reds, coppers. They're pretty good. I might leave those out. And I think I'm going to do that, guys. I'm going to drop... Where'd the lid go? Put the beads away. I think I'll pop some random beads on the piece, am I in the right spot that you guys can see? Just some little beads around the place. That'll be fun. Let's just add another hour of work to this piece. These bright ideas. Yeah, just some different sized little red berry beads. Let me zoom in a little bit more. See them there? Yeah, I like that. Well, that's a definite. So my homework is to finish stitching my honey sign, install the honey sign, get these leaves down, and then in amongst the leaves as I work around, I will um, add the, the beads. Yeah, that's really good. Let me zoom back up. All right, guys. Thank you very much for joining me and um, give me the thumbs up if you're enjoying the series. That'd be great and um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.